Hello, today I'm going to go over everything you need to know about heating curves. What are heating curves? They are graphs that show how a substance's temperature changes as the substance gets heated. They will also show you when the substance's state of matter changes. When you're graphing a heating curve, temperature is going to be put on the y-axis, and time, or heat added, will be put on the x-axis. As time goes on, or as heat is consistently added, the temperature will increase, and the substance will go through phase changes. There are five sections in a heating curve. Heating curves will start off with the substance in the solid phase, and end with the substance in the gaseous phase. The first section is when the solid is warming. As this is the heating curve for water, this section will show ice warming as heat is added. In the second section, the substance's melting point is reached and the solid changes to a liquid. For this curve, the ice is melting at 0 degrees Celsius and becoming water. In section 3, the liquid will heat up until it reaches the substance's boiling point, in this case 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water. Section 4 has liquid water boiling and becoming steam. It's simply going from the liquid phase into the gaseous phase. Finally, section 5 has gas warming. So you might have noticed there are two different types of sections in a heating curve. In three of the sections, the temperature is changing, and in two of the sections, the state of matter is changing. For the temperature change section, the temperature will change in a linear fashion, but the state of matter will stay the same. The added heat is increasing the temperature of the substance. The state change sections of the graph are a little different. The temperature will not change, but the substance's state will. It will either melt as it goes from a solid to a liquid, or boil as it changes from a liquid to a gas. The added heat is being used to break the substance's intramolecular forces and change the state of matter, so you will not see a temperature increase. There are two different types of calculations associated with heating curves, one for the temperature change sections and one for the state change sections. For temperature change, you use this formula, Q equals mass times specific heat capacity times delta T. Let's break this down. Q is heat, which uses the units joules. Mass is in grams. C stands for the specific heat capacity. This is in joules over grams times degrees Celsius. Now this is a constant. It will change depending on the substance. It tells you how much energy is needed to take one gram of a substance and raise its temperature by one degree Celsius. Delta T is the change in temperature. You find this by taking the final temperature and subtracting the initial temperature of the substance. Now, be careful with your units. Sometimes, specific heat may be given in kilojoules instead, which would lead your calculated heat to have kilojoule units. For state change, there is a slightly simpler equation. For this, you take the number of moles and multiply by either the heat of fusion or the heat of vaporization. Both of these are constants that change depending on the substance. N stands for moles, delta H stands for heat of fusion or heat of vaporization. You'll see a subscript F or V depending on which one. Now heat of fusion and heat of vaporization are both constants. They tell you the amount of energy needed to change the state of matter of one mole of the substance. Heat of fusion is when the substance is melting, going from solid to liquid. Heat of vaporization is when the substance is boiling, going from liquid to gas. When using this equation, you must know which phase change you're working with so you can use the right constant. Again, be careful with your units. Heat of fusion, or heat of vaporization, are typically given in kilojoules, so your calculations will result in a heat with kilojoule units. You may need to convert it to joules. Now, let's use these equations. A question could ask you, how much heat is required to heat 12.5 moles of solid H2O at negative 25 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius? The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules over grams times Celsius. This is a temperature change problem, so you're going to use the temperature change equation. This requires you to find three things. Mass, specific heat, and change in temperature. So first, mass. You take 12.5 moles and you multiply by the molar mass of water to get grams. So you get 225.3 grams of water. Specific heat is given to you, 4.18. For the change in temperature, you are starting at negative 25 degrees Celsius and you are moving to 0 degrees Celsius. You plug that into final minus initial to get a temperature change of positive 25 degrees Celsius. You plug these three numbers into the equation 
to get 23,543.85 joules. Now you can round this up so you can get 23,500 joules. For a state change question, you might be asked, how much heat is needed to change 45 grams of liquid H2O into steam, H2O in the gas phase? You are given heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. So because this is a state change, you need to use the state change equation. There are two things you need for this equation, moles and heat of fusion or heat of vaporization. Notice that water is going from liquid to gas, which means it's boiling and the heat of vaporization should be used, not the heat of fusion. Heat of fusion would be used if the question asked for ice melting. So to find moles, divide 45 grams by the molar mass of water to get 2.5 moles of water. Since we're using the heat of vaporization, we're going to use this constant. So plug that into the equation and multiply 2.5 moles times 40.7 kilojoules over moles, and you will need 101 kilojoules to change 45 grams of water into steam. If you needed to have the heat in joules, simply multiply this number by a thousand. Thanks for watching! I hope you learned how to read a heating curve, the related formulas, and how to solve heating curve calculations.